Time to wake up. Stop. So the previous sequence you just saw of me waking up, the whole morning routine, these were all examples of top-down shots. A lot of tech YouTubers use these types of down-facing shots to get different unique angles of products they are reviewing. It just looks really awesome and is a great technique to incorporate to your videos. So let's get started. The first setup would be using a tripod. This is definitely not the best solution, but I think most of you guys that are watching this video have at least a tripod at home. There are certain limits to it, depending on the tripod you have and how you want your shot to be. I find it difficult because I more likely get the legs of the tripod in the shot. And I also don't have a large area to film giving me limited space. A better option would be using a background stand with a multiple clamp. I use the Kalman Flex, which has a one quarter thread mount to mount my camera. It's extremely robust and tightens up very well so that the camera stays safe. The great thing about this setup is that you don't really need to add any counterweights since both stands keep the camera stable. The downside to it is that the setup takes longer and uses a lot of space. This is more of a permanent setup. So if you're doing a bunch of tabletop videos, then this might be the right solution for you. Another way to set up an overhead shot is simply using a C-stand. Since it's made up of pure metal, it's pretty heavy and you don't really need to put any extra weight when mounting a mirrorless camera, at least with my Sony a7 III. It's adjustable, making it really easy to move the camera in all directions. So if you have some extra money, definitely spend it on a C-stand. If it's too heavy, you might want to use uh, sandbags to support the stand, leveling out the weight so that nothing falls and breaks the camera. As a bonus tip, with a really heavy and expensive camera that is difficult to mount, a great hack is to use a mirror hanging above the countertop. Just tilt up the camera and zoom in on the mirror and there you have it already, a nice overhead shot. The image and letters will be reversed, but you can easily fix that in post. This is a safe and inexpensive method. Let's now take a look on how to make your shot look nice. I use a wide angle lens like the Sony 16 to 35 because it allows me to capture a wider area giving me more space in my shots. The great thing about using a zoom lens is that I can always adjust the framing by changing the focal length. For the focus mode, I leave it at autofocus. The autofocus on the a7 III does a really great job. For overhead shots, I always shoot in 4K. This allows me to crop in in post. This can help if I want to adjust the framing to get different shots or to correct the horizon if that wasn't done well. Now, in order to check your shot, you can use the flip out screen. If your camera doesn't support it, the best way is to simply use a monitor. If you have the Sony a7 III, you can wirelessly connect it to your smartphone using an app. If not, use a monitor that connects by using an HDMI cable. With a clamp, you can mount the monitor onto the stand. This way, you can constantly monitor what's in your frame. A great tip is to mark out the frame lines on the surface using tape or drawing it out with a pencil. This way, you have an idea of where the frame is when you're showing off the product. For my single light source, I will be using the Aperture 120D with the Light Dome 2. If you don't have a softbox, you can also use natural light. I find this the best light source, but it can be difficult controlling it because if you have direct sunlight, the shadows might be too harsh, giving you a contrasty look. Another option would be mounting a small light like the Aperture MC onto the stand using a clamp. The key when using light is to keep it soft by using a diffuser and keeping it close to the subject. That is why I prefer using a softbox. It just gives me more control and offers a very soft light. Set it up high so that it points down to around a 45 degree angle. You want to make sure that it's evenly lit, creating a sort of soft spotlight. For the backdrop, you want to choose a surface that doesn't reflect. You want to choose something that fits the product. Neutral surfaces like concrete floor, wood, colored backdrops, also wrapping paper. Another thing, another thing, another thing to consider is adding decorations like plants or other things that make the shot look more interesting. So that was it guys. So these were a few ways on how to set up an overhead rig for your videos. 